I've often heard this classified as the alignment problem, right? So maybe the the clearest one for me is when we talked about the um, the uh, recommendation algorithms and how it, they're very effective at what they do, but it's not necessarily what we want them to do because it's addictive. It can send you down the the wrong mm-hmm. way, and so I, I see that as sort of sort of one alignment problem that I'm worried about. Certainly, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's it's a, there's a really big. Um, I mean, there's there's that big alignment problem of um, what's good for, a, for an online platform. It's not what's necessarily good for you because what's good for an online platform is for you to be on there a lot and be deeply engaged in uh, repetitively looking at things that they can fit ads in, right? That's what, that's what they're going to get rewarded for. And therefore, they get, their systems are almost, that they are deliberately designed to uh, for engagement, right? To, to hook you in, like we talked about YouTube. And so I, I've got a very um, proactive way of dealing with social media you know i'm on twitter but it's not on my phone it's just on my desktop because i don't like sitting on my desk that much anyway so um i i i've got an incentive to get away from, from twitter but i like using it for certain things so i've got a really clear functional goal when i get on twitter um but that's that's not the way it's designed twitter is designed to be a scroll fest and once i get on there i get caught up scrolling through and looking at things sometimes so that's a that's a kind of basic alignment problem i think is that's co- that's causing big issues you know if you talk to psychologists around phone addiction it's that's that's the reason right then take that extrapolate and and move it into then applying this to not social media but to fields where it really matters that you get right answers and and you do things and you have these these huge alignment issues as well and so i I don't necessarily agree with the super intelligence hypothesis that these things will become smarter than us and i wouldn't discount it but the sort of most common one is from nick bostrom in his book super intelligence that talks about if you just give it goal of producing as many paper clips as you possibly can mm-hmm. uh, and that's the only value it has to do then it might eventually go and wipe out all civilization um, because people just get in the way of um, mining mm-hmm. and all this kind of stuff his his proposal is a paperclip building robot would wipe out all civilization in order to travel to other planets and mine paper clips i mean that's obviously a it's supposed to be a bit of a ridiculous um, scenario for a reason but it's, it seems to me that those types of scenarios are not that likely. Even if we do get to superintelligence, it will require so much common sense reasoning on the behalf of, of an artificial agent that they would have enough common sense to know that wiping out the human race is not a value that's um, it's worth that's worthwhile. But you can nonetheless see it when you take the social media platform example and you match them. It's just both in a, a problem with how are the values of that encoded into the algorithm, whose values are encoded into that, and then what's the behavior that's going to emerge from that based on what happens here? I, I don't think Facebook is a very good company for um, caring about its users' uh, addiction mm-hmm. a, a lot, but I guarantee they didn't set out with the goal of creating mental health problems of over addiction on mobile phones, right? That was it. They don't seem to really worry too much about that, but I don't think that was their goal. Their goal was to hook people together share ideas such that they could sell ads to them right and that's that's not a bad goal to have but that this kind of the alignment of values is is out of whack and they don't have much incentive to change it so you can see between those two things there's a scale there's somewhere in between where things are even even worse and uh, that's a that's a big risk we have at the moment Give me uh, a bit more optimism, actually, the talking about the way these are trained and that these values and goals aren't really hard coded into into the networks very often. And there's almost always a human there correcting the thing. And there's a human that's teaching it the, yep. at the always at the output. So to me, that's like a pretty good feedback mechanism that is not going to get too far off track because also because like the goal of training, the goals that you're trying to get it to do. So like the better you get at aligning it is just the better at doing the thing that it's meant to do. Where, where I'm um, somewhat of an expert is in decision making, right? How do you use tools to make people make better decisions? And what we're kind of seeing in the current context now is the tools that help people make better decisions are often the tools that they that requires them to think a little bit harder. There's other simpler tools where you can say, well, basically an AI algorithm makes the decision and you just got to verify. It. They're very easy to use. When, when we do field studies and experiments, people prefer the simple one. They will actively say, yes, I like this one more, but they'll make better decisions with the, the, the harder one, let's say. And so the, there's an alignment. That's a simple example of an alignment problem. If you say, uh, uh, if the algorithm adapted to the user preference, I like this one more, you would end up with worse decisions 
easier but worse decisions. If the alignment is better decision making in the end, you end up with better decisions but an unhappier user base. And so that's a pretty good example of a simple alignment problem um, where you could end up with, I, I would say, uh, suboptimal outcomes, people making worse decisions because the the value of the, the person doesn't really understand what their values are, right? They're not quite understand. They find this is harder to use for me and they're not really able to see over the long run, this will make better decisions for you. Even though that's probably what they say their value is, their short-term value is, uh, I want to reduce my cognitive load and reduce the amount of time I spend at work and stuff like that. So there's, there's some sort of simple ones that we can even, we can even align. And so when, when that's kind of, it's not really clear what a user's value is to them or there's different objectives and they weight them differently, um, based on whether they're thinking long term or short term, it becomes really hard to to align them. And then put a platform in the middle who's who's got different objectives altogether, and it's a difficult task, right? Uh, yeah, I don't quite understand what you mean by the the hard and easy easy decisions there. Could you oh, sorry, that was my mistake. But, um, so if you give them a tool to help them make decisions, some tools that are very easy to use. That, for example, they'll just say, "This is the this is the answer you should use." And it's very easy to use them. You can just say, I'll, I'll accept your, your, um, your recommendations. So let's say it's a diagnosis, a medical diagnosis. Um, I, I diagnose this. Okay, look, I'll just accept the tool's diagnosis. It's pretty good. That's very easy. But but turns out tools get it wrong. So what you want is the person to, to engage a little bit on a tool's decision. There are techniques for making people think through these, these situations and they'll make better decisions because they'll critique the tool more. Preferential wise, that's rated as worse by by users because it requires them to think and it's harder and it's more time, more cognitive effort, but they make better decisions. So these tools that force you to think through. So if you optimize for user preference, you'll end up with worse outcomes. If you optimize for better outcomes, better decisions, you'll end up with unhappier users. And so there's a there's a balance here that you have to try and strike. And then you stick a platform in the middle that might sell ads on something. Um, and there's is totally different is to keep you coming back. You've got these mis these internal misalignment and, and alignment between actors. It's a really difficult problem to solve.